Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the eight hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com and this has the primary trend line drawn in here. Now besides the rising pennant formation as a technical formation with predictive value to where a market is going the other most important line you can draw as far as uh, breakouts is going to be this trend line. It's not a coincidence that this trend line has all of these touch points. Now we know that silver can't go to zero. We're already looking at mining costs exceeding the, the value of what the silver can be sold for the same with gold we know that these are manipulated the question is how far down can they manipulate them now the rally point here is going to be very close to twenty dollars soon it's only going to take out a, a breakout of twenty dollars and fifty cents right now to break this downtrend line just back in september the downtrend line was at twenty four dollars plus and as recently as November, it was $22.50. We're down to $20. So we have a turning point coming. Now I want to show you as we move in closer here, the volume that we have seen come in here. Now I posted on the member site a chart showing this volume, but let's examine this again here. This is very important because we're talking about an enormous amount of volume. You're talking 750,000 contracts twice just in this one spike and you can see the the movement there in the price it comes to about 7.5 billion ounces when you do the math multiply out the contracts. So why is that important? It's important because at some point the paper traders and they've done this quite a bit and they've been foiled but the paper traders who are greedy just like the Wall Street bankers are going to try to catch the bottom because they can make tremendous paper profits if they do catch that bottom so this increase in paper volume to the extent that we haven't seen before is very important. Now compared to the volume that we had with the tax day smackdown, we'll call it the Boston bombing takedown and the volume leading up to that, you can see the volume very clearly led up to that time and then decreased down after that. Uh, big smackdowns on the way but and you can see how small this current volume is nevertheless compared to rallies such as this one and other rallies that we've had this is the first time we're seeing significant buying volume come in in the past it's always been selling volume in other words the paper longs have been blown out of the water by the paper shorts but now it appears that some of the paper longs are willing to take a position with a lot of things turning around and there are a lot of things turning around right now I want to take you to a image of the Russell 2000 index now this is a more dramatic index than say the Dow or the S&P 500 or even the NASDAQ and you can see how dramatic this recent run is we know that ever since Obama was put into office they have gunned the markets and you can see that right there 2009 and that's basically early spring of 2009 the Russell 2000 index has run from roughly 300 maybe a little bit more to almost 1200 so we're talking about nearly a four-fold move in this very large stock index this is 2000 stocks so this is much larger 
and the Dow 30 or the S&P 500. So this is the returns we've seen on stocks. And you can see it is forming that type of parabolic formation. Now it could go much, much higher all the way up to the top here and then crash. But it could also crash like it did here and it did here. So just for historical comparisons, you can look back and try to find a fourfold move here. We can look back here and see that we're we're talking about roughly 50 on the price and it took to get up to a fourfold move of 200 it took about 12 years just to get to this point here and you can see on the way before we even made that we had the 1987 crash now you can pick 100 as the bottom here and look to where we got 400 and you're talking about the beginning of the 90s all the way to the NASDAQ top to get that same sort of return. The only one that exceeds it would be this 100 to 600, and that was the very top of the NASDAQ crash. This other bottom here at 300, we really only ran, and this is essentially the Bush presidency, we really only ran from about 300 to about 800, so just a little more than a double. But this move here, this is an incredible move. This is an unprecedented move in the amount of time. We're talking about a little over five years for this thing, or four years, a little over four years, around five years, for this thing to move fourfold. Now that is unbelievable, especially when we put this up against something like the Baltic Dry Index. Now you can see the Baltic Dry Index, if you're not familiar with it, this is an index of international shipping rates. That index completely collapsed with the collapse of oil and the collapse of the economy back in the financial crisis. It had a brief uptick. You have to realize how far this index collapsed. It went from 11,500 all the way down to 800. So that's a 90 plus percent collapse in this index. It rallied and then it fell off. And this is the type of sideways move that we're seeing here. You see the same thing if you look at the non-rigged unemployment in the indices or some of the manufacturing indices, just this flat line. We're just starting to get a rally now about up to that 2000 level. So we might be at the point where we're going to go into some type of inflationary environment. And that's something also that seems to be indicated by the bond indices. And I covered that. I posted a chart today on the bond indices. Now, you can look at the 30-year Treasury bond. And you can see here very clearly we have an approach, a rapid approach to a very long trend line that started all the way back in 1981. So a penetration of this long held trend line is going to be very significant. You can see the same thing on the 10 year note. A rapid decline, this one's actually more bearish approaching a potential breakdown. If these interest rates spike, and we just crossed over 3% today on the 10-year note, if these interest rates spike, that's going to have a lot of ramifications. That means that the amount of money paid on the national debt is going to increase dramatically. That means that a lot of pressure is going to be put on the stock market. Now, if you want to look at the short term, you can look at three month euro dollars. That's a, uh, it's not the T bill, but it's basically the same thing. And you can see flat line dead at nearly 0% interest rate. So this is an unprecedented situation that we have here. You can see that in the past recessions that we had, here's the Bush recession, and you have the Clinton recession that you had a rounding off and then a rising of interest rates on the short term. All you have to do is subtract from 100. So for example, if we're looking at this point right here, 
at 94, that means that in 2008, at one point, there was a 6% short-term interest rate. And you can see here we're at 997 so a ridiculously low interest rate. That's the type of stuff we are approaching a breaking point. Now, I want to talk about what I believe is behind a lot of what the government is doing, especially the TSA. And I wanted to begin with a video that was covered on Zero Hedge. And let's watch a little bit of this, and then we're going to talk about the TSA and Homeland Security. We all know the importance of airport security. So as you head through the checkpoint this holiday season with food and gift items, we here at the TSA hope you'll keep in mind this friendly gift guide to the 12 banned items of Christmas. Otherwise, your friendly local TSA agent might give you an enhanced pat down. If you touch my junk, I'm gonna have you arrested. So what is a gel? Here at the TSA, we've just decided to ban most of your holiday favorites. Cranberry sauce, gravy, dip, maple syrup. But it's not that simple. Take this avocado. Solid food, absolutely legal to carry on. But then, guacamole. Tasty, but also an officially prohibited TSA gel. You can carry on a cherry pie, but you absolutely cannot bring the cherry filling alone. Now we're safe. You cannot bring a one-inch pocket knife or other TSA-designated thrusting weapons, except vibrators. You can, however, bring metal scissors with pointy four-inch blades or giant steel knitting needles. Please, do not thrust here or here. If you're looking for a gift with an edge, just remember that you can't bring anything with a blade, like a corkscrew. You can, however, bring ice skates. Don't worry, the human skull is slightly harder than this. Sometimes sporting goods can be dangerous. For example, TSA designated sporting bludgeons, like this wiffle ball bat. Fortunately, you can take titanium tennis rackets. We all know that you can't bring a pool cue, but you can bring a fishing rod. But what should you get the bowl? So you get the point. I'm not going to go through the whole thing there, but you get the point of the absurdity of some of these rules if you're trying to analyze it in terms of safety. Now, if you analyze it in terms of capital controls, you get an entirely different answer. So let's read this comment from Jim Willie. I think this is really interesting what he said here. He's talking about the war on terrorism and he says the promoted story is the government coordinated projects to fight terrorism. The actual story is more like a smokescreen to clamp down on civil liberties to clamp down on human movements like at airports and borders for the unexpressed purpose of eliminating narcotics trafficking and competition while limiting the movement of cash. The prohibited water bottles on board commercial aircraft was a major tip-off, not the shoe removals. To forbid water to passengers seemed far too odd to pass a reasonable policy. It is common knowledge that clear water is an excellent method to carry white diamonds in clandestine manner. So there you have it. I challenge you to watch this video again thinking about the purpose of the TSA and all the rest of these things is to begin to institute capital controls, border checkpoints to prevent people from taking wealth out of the country. That's what's behind all this. They know that the economic collapse is coming. They know that they ultimately aren't going to be able to completely restrict travel 
but they do want to restrict people's ability to get money out of the country when this collapse comes. So it's my personal belief. I, I can't convince you that these things are hoaxes. The vast majority of these things are hoaxes. If you believe that they're hoaxes, I suggest that you go to a blog recently discovered by my wife called the Max Rat Deconstruction Zone. And he's got uh, deconstruction audio on Sandy Hook, Boston bombing, 911. And if you listen to it, they're very valuable because he actually plays. I recently posted the cancer one here, deconstructing the cancer scam that they're running. But if you go back and look in the history of this blog, you'll find deconstructions of 911, Sandy Hook, Boston bombing. A lot of these staged, in my opinion, uh, mind control events. And of course, the purpose is this ultimate clampdown and getting um, the American people used to the idea that they need to be searched everywhere they go. And of course, it's my contention that the reason that they're searching people has nothing to do with protecting people from terrorism. It has to do with putting the mechanisms in place to institute border security, capital controls to prevent capital flight when this inevitable collapse comes. We know it's coming. So you might want to watch this video again and try to think of creative ways to perhaps defeat those controls. Maybe have silver blades on your uh, ice skates or something like that. But uh, it's very interesting to think of that in terms when you rewatch that. So I challenge you to listen to the deconstruction that Max Rat does and shows you very clearly that none of this is what you think it is. It really is just an attempt to lock down the borders for the eventual economic collapse that is certainly coming. That is coming when these markets finally reverse a lot of people don't believe they're going to reverse. The Fed has promised that it will keep interest rates near zero for basically forever. But it doesn't take a genius technician to see that this type of chart pattern is going to result in a crash. When it results in a crash, you're going to see them come after pensions, 401ks, stock market investments, inheritance and everything else under the guise of protecting you from Wall Street, protecting you from making your own decisions. And at that point in time, especially if we have a US dollar collapse along with that, you're going to see a lot of capital flight in this country and Americans are going to try to get their money out of the country. That's why they're clamping down early. So back to the silver chart. Uh, this is very bullish in my opinion that we now have, I won't term them commercials, but we have some speculative commercials or speculators coming in on the long side, making the bet in the paper that they're done with their smackdowns. If we get that cross above this downtrend line, I think we'll probably see a much larger piling on of paper, maybe something to rival the downtrend that we had when they were pushing it down with these staged events. So we're coming to a inflection point here in the markets, in the economy, and in all the things that they're doing. I believe that 2014 is going to be a very, very exciting and eventful year. And uh, you always want to keep an eye on the cryptocurrencies because as I've covered on the Bitcoin blog, the Bitcoin channel, that this is one potential way to defeat capital controls. There's simply nothing they can do to clamp down on movement of money if it's in an alternative currency, a digital currency. So that's what's coming. They know the collapse is coming. They know people are going to try to flee with their money. And they're putting everything in place ahead of time to try to prevent that. And we'll talk to you next time.